The next example demonstrates a certain technique that is often used in order to link variables in a particular way to each other. To illustrate that technique, we will use a simple lot sizing problem. The problem is as follows. Imagine that you are in charge to buy and provide a certain item in order to meet the weekly demand of your company for that item. Suppose that you know the demand for the next three weeks. Let's assume the following data. To meet that demand, you could contact your supplier to deliver to you in each week what is needed in that week. Your orders may look like this. There are other strategies. You could, for instance, place an order that covers the demand for several weeks. For example, you could order in week 1 the total demand for 3 weeks, which means that in weeks 2 and 3 no orders must be placed. The size of the orders is not limited and orders can be as large as needed. Shortages and back orders are not allowed. That means that you must make sure that demand is met in time. If your weekly order exceeds what is needed in that week, you have to keep items on stock. Let's assume in our example that nothing is on stock at the beginning of week 1. The inventory at the end of the period is as follows. Having items on stock means binding capital. Hence, a holding cost is incurred for each item that is kept on stock. Let's say that the holding cost per item is 5 euros. It is then easy to compute the total holding cost for each week. In addition, there is a fixed cost for each order that you place. Let's call this the setup cost and assume that the setup cost per order is 100 euros. The total cost is the sum of setup and holding cost. Our goal is to find a strategy for ordering items with minimum total cost. Try to formulate a general model for this problem. Pause the video now. A general model for this slot sizing problem can be derived as follows. 
Specifying the parameters should not cause any problems. They were already mentioned in the example. Next we need to define decision variables. A straightforward choice would be the following. But that's not all. It'll turn out to be useful to define a binary decision variable to indicate whether or not we place an order. The objective is to minimize the total cost. The domains are easy, I believe, so let's put them here first. The constraints may not be easy to formulate. The inventory can be seen as being the state of the system at the end of a period. Hence we can use a technique that we have seen in a previous video on subsequent events along a timeline. The inventory at the end of a period equals the inventory at the beginning of that period 
plus the number of items that we order in that period minus the demand that we face in that period. The demand, of course, is a parameter. In addition to that, we need a constraint that links the variable qt to the variable xt and vice versa in a proper fashion. Here you will see the modeling trick that this video is all about. Let's do it step by step. It should be clear that if we do not place an order, which is indicated by xt equals zero, then the number of items being ordered is zero. In a first attempt, we could write Qt is less than or equal to xt in all periods. Which makes sure that when xt equals zero, qt cannot be positive. But something is odd, because qt is zero one valued. If xt equals one to indicate that an order is placed, the maximum size of the orders is limited to 1, which is not sensible in most situations. It would make more sense to have a binary variable xt is element of 0 or m, where m is a number large enough so that it doesn't limit the size of the order. Note that m is a parameter. If we want to keep xt being 0, 1 valued, we can use the trick that we have seen in a previous video when we introduced binary variables. Now, if xt equals 0 to indicate that no order is placed, qt must be equal to 0. If xt equals 1 to indicate that an order is placed, qt can take any value between 0 and m. From a different angle we can say that if qt is positive, that is items are ordered, then xt must equal 1. If qt equals 0, xt can be 0 or 1. Having this understood, there is one more detail. Note that it would be feasible to have qt equal 0 and xt equal 1. But that would not happen in an optimum solution because of the objective function which tries to keep xt as small as possible. This is just another example that shows that interactions among the different components of a model are important to grasp. Big M formulations like this work fine, but it should be remarked that when it comes to solving a model, it is often a poor idea to choose a big M that is too big. Since we are not going into details of solution procedures here, my advice would be to choose M as small as possible so that M does not cause any restrictions that are not part of the problem. In other words, do not choose big M bigger than necessary. When using a big M formulation, you should always state what value for M is big enough. In our case, we can say that m equal to the sum of all demands is the smallest possible number that does not induce any restrictions. As a final remark, I should say that this little model is quite interesting to study. Do you remember that I mentioned that shortages and back orders are not allowed and demand must be met in time? Where is the constraint that guarantees that? Or did I forget something? Think about it and pause the video now.
The answer is that the domain of the inventory variables in combination with the inventory balance constraints guarantee that. The inventory must not be negative and so shortages and back orders cannot occur. So be warned. When dealing with models, even small details may have a strong impact.